quickly move on to this. This is a clip courtesy of this channel that I want to give a shout out because this guy puts some good content on. And I think if you're looking for content regarding all the comedy people, I think you should check this guy out. It's called this, right? Too Lazy to Try. And it's true because the guy does sound like he's in a fucking coma every time he's speaking. Don't get me wrong. It takes some, it takes some um, watching to get used to his way of speaking um, and his tone and his delivery and stuff. Because like I said, it sounds like he's legitimately asleep half the time. But the content's really good. He's really concise of his points. And he uploads on a consistent basis. And he kind of covers all the stuff that I'm generally kind of into. And he's got this video that's titled, Andrew Schultz defends Brendan Schwab and trashes Kalila. Now... I've got an issue with this in general, the clip and what they say. I'm going to play some of the clips of what they feature because I think this is from Flagrant and it features, um, what's his name, True Geordie, who's obviously a UK content creator over here in it. So definitely check that out. But um, yeah, oh wow, Jesus Christos. Jean Keebler, thank you for the, I think, he'll, is it going to come up for a notification? But if it doesn't anyway, I'll just saw it now, the right eye. Thank you for the flipping, um, for the $99, $99, mate. Nearly $100. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate you. That's amazing. Thank you so much, but you didn't have to do that. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bloody hell. That came out of the blue, innit? it? Jesus. Um, so, yes, yeah, so a big up John Keebler. Big up John Keebler. You are an absolute legend. Where's his notification? Is this going to come up? There we go. Super chatted. There. Cool. Took a while, didn't it? Any sound? There we go. Jesus, my computer, man. Thank you, John Keebler, for the $99.99. I do appreciate you. You are amazing. Um, so, let's, let's continue. Um, so, yeah, this is from Flagrant 2. It features True Geordie, a really big YouTube creator here over the, in the UK. Some people affectionately refer to him as the um, the budget Joe Rogan. I don't think so. He's probably more similar to like a Brendan Schaub in terms of his reception, the cover, topics he covers, and his general acumen, if that makes any sense. But I do enjoy some of his content, but I haven't watched it in ages. Especially since he pivoted into doing the football and he does it with that annoying Chelsea fan, that, no, that annoying Liverpool fan guy who I fucking detest. So I generally don't pay attention to his content, but True Geordi is a pioneer in this UK YouTube scene, so definitely check out True Geordi. But anyway, this is a clip. I'll play some of it and I'll comment as we go along. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. This guy evaporated, yeah. right? He's now just like Brendan Schaub's right hand man or whatever yeah, yeah, the fuck's yeah, going yeah, on yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> like he hid away. When yeah. you show weakness like that, yeah, yeah. that's when the rest of the world are like, oh, you're he guilty. He, he did something. Did it. Yeah. And I'm like, so I don't think Chris D'Elia fans will be too happy. Hold on. I don't know what he's talking about. Showing weakness. Do you know what Chris Lee was accused of, man? He was accused of diddling. He was accused of approaching or trying to approach flipping near underage girls. That's really a serious allegation. I, I think at the time I said myself that I didn't think his silence, especially his prolonged silence, did him any favours. But him disappearing and kind of staying away from things was good. He probably shouldn't have come out and said something straight away. You've been accused of trying to approach girls who are close to being underage. You probably should kind of keep your counsel and be a little bit stum. You shouldn't be coming on podcast straight away and trying to fight, fight your case. Maybe keep quiet for a little bit. These guys are going on like as if he was accused of bullying somebody in the workplace or not leaving a tip or shouting at his assistant or throwing something at his maid or something. Nah, man, he was accused of diddling kids. And some of the accounts were pretty grim if you read some of the court documents or the... Sorry, the... Um, is it the court documents or the documents that he got, got sober, whatever it may be, it's flipping crazy. Like, don't, honestly, I don't, I don't know how they could spin it in that way. But how they refer to him as, like, Chris Lee as being Brendan Shaw's right-hand man, he's kind of disappeared, it is true. He, he, Chris Lee is a complete shell of a human being that he was prior. He is nowhere near as bombastic, as outgoing, as lively, as kind of, he kind of always seen as somebody that was always on, he's always, like, electricity was always circulating through his fucking body. I know it's probably electricity from all the from all the flipping spirits of young girls that he was flipping absorbing into his soul and stuff. But in general, he seemed to be really somebody that was kind of had a verve for life. You know what I mean? Because he clearly was somebody that had loads of things on the horizon that he was wanting to do, being in movies, acting, um, directing things, maybe going on tour, Broadway, whatever. There was so many things that were in his purview, talk shows and stuff. And then now he's like so like grey. He just looks, don't get me wrong, he never looked fucking 21, but he looks his age now. Before, I never knew what age he was. He was kind of, you know, white people that exist. You know, like black people. There are white people that exist that you don't really know how old they are. You don't know if they're 35, 37, 42, 52. Do you know what I mean? They've just got a kind of, they're kind of, they're kind of unspecified in their age. 
That's what Chris O'Neill was like. Now he looks his age. He's grey. He looks forlorn. He looks like he's got the st- loads of stress on the back of his on the back of his shoulders. And this is somebody also you have to imagine who has parents who are pretty well off. Yeah, he still looks like that. So that's because I'd imagine if you've got parents that are well off, the financial burden of looking after your family or yourself is kind of a little bit alleviated because you know you can you can you can rely on them to some extent. Don't get me wrong, no man wants to rely on their family or their parents forever. But if you have the ability to do so, and you have rich parents, why not use them? Do you know what I mean they, they fucking worked hard to provide for you anyway? So that's a, obviously a good layup. But he still looks stressed. So clearly, all of those allegations of the thing the can't say she had to go through the public humiliation is horrible. And you also have to think, bear this in mind. People don't probably bear this in mind enough. Chris Lear, before the allegation, had a pretty squeaky clean image. It's weird to say this now because of everything that's happened, but he was pretty squeaky clean. No one knew of any of his kind of kinks, of his vices or whatever. And he was always somebody that kind of, and I'm sure we're all the same, have you got friends in your circle who don't drink or don't do drugs or are sober and stuff and they boast about it a lot and they kind of make you pissed off like they're not they're not the most um courteous about it they're like kind of like that like that annoying vegan friend they're always rubbing in your face that they don't drink oh you're, you're hungover again aren't you tired of being hungover that's so lame being hung well that's all nonsense that's how chris Alea was he was very smarmy and very kind of arrogant about him being sober and not partaking in those sort of vices and if you're connected to it and you'd imagine if somebody doesn't drink or doesn't do drugs you would imagine, I don't know why, maybe it's a bit naive, but you would imagine most likely they don't do other things too because they're not involved in nightlife because, or darkness stuff or stuff that happens behind the closed doors because anything concerning drugs and drinking, you would maybe ascribe to, you know, stuff that happens after hours and stuff, hooking up with girls, going out to random places. But if you're sober, I'd imagine you won't want to be there. So when it was revealed that that happened, it basically exposed a huge part of his personality that he kept hidden for 40 plus years. No one knew about it outside of maybe people in the scene. The audience just saw him as a silly goose, a funny guy that made sounds and did all that and podcasts and stuff and, ha- you know, had his babies and his cult and stuff. And then it, it, it blew up and everyone found out that he has this kink for girls who are on the verge of being underage because clearly that's his kink. He clearly likes girls who are like just about to turn um, legal or who are just underage or whatever it may be. And he didn't want anyone to know that. And obviously it happened. And the fact that he fucks all these fans or whatever it may be, allegedly. So... The fact that he disappeared and wanted to dis- and wanted to not be around, I think is understandable because he went through a lot. This is not me excusing what he went through, but to get exposed in that way publicly is pretty brutal. And the fact that his whole career came tumbling down, you have to imagine. This is somebody who was on the cusp of trying to become a Hollywood movie star. He was going to be in that zombie movie that Tig Nakara, whatever her name is, um, ended up taking away from him or ended up replacing him on. And he spoke about wanting to be an action movie star. He was doing all those videos on Instagram with him lifting weights and dumbbells and all that shit half naked, which was weird to me at the time. But clearly at the time he was trying to use it as a bit of a first trap also, allegedly to kind of, you know, attract young UCLA girls and shit or whatnot. Um, or Chili's from high school, who knows, right? Um, allegedly, again, don't sue me, please. Um, and then it all came tumbling down and now he's just left with being Brendan's right hand man, cock holster, whatever, and doing stand up. It must be awful. Imagine random people, because it, when it's LA, there's loads of liberal lefty types out there. Imagine the random girls that scream shit at him at coffee shops or in his car or give him dirty looks or maybe they spit in his coffee. Like, just imagine what it is like day to day. Like, oh, his girl, even though she forgave him, I'm pretty sure she's always looking at him with a side eye. He knows it. It's like, I don't blame the guy for being quiet, honestly. These guys are making it sound like he went through a minor thing. It was a big deal. But anyway, let's skim across again. And I want to see what else they say. Uh, let's see. You associate with him. People are obviously... Not that. So you're going to get pissed. And it barely even affected him. Like, people... ...reading that article and still calling it... There's some really weird shit going on. And I saw... Come on, ...is it? the fact that she went on Deaf Noodles podcast to talk about this. Alright, so now let's carry on to when they talk about the Brendan Schaub drama and they talk about how Brendan's a great guy and everything and they defend him and then they talk about how Kalila knew what she was doing and I think Andrew says that he believes that she was behind the sub- okay, so, come on. They yeah. were, they were, I mean, what- on, let's go. Hooray. Brendan's and, yeah, people come after him straight away. I mean, oh, I mean they yeah. were, they were, I mean, what happens on Reddit to him and he's actually a really sweet guy. I love he's him. Really like, nice. He's a fucking, he's really the inspiration. I, 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 yeah. 
they talk so much. This is the thing about these comedians, right? That is awful, I think. Just objectively and not having my own bias and my own dislike to one side. These guys gossip about each other so much in front of the camera, behind the camera. But in the moment, us, us mere mortals, us mere civilians, point out some of their inconsistencies, laugh at them maybe a level above, point out some of the redacted things they do, they immediately start to go to defend and then forget all the crazy shit they said about their own friend and make it seem as if they're a good guy. Brendan, from the stuff we've seen about him online, has done some things that you could say a good guy shouldn't do, right? We don't know him behind this. We don't know him, you know, in real life. He could be a brilliant dude. But from what we see online, this is the thing that I always have to clarify. From what we've seen online of this guy, he comes across like a piece of shit. That's just, that's just, un, just, just kind of like, you can't argue that. It just is what it is. Now, do you care? Do you address it? it is whatever, that's whatever it may be. But the, there's a bona fide fact of, an, of a thinking um, observation that if you've looked at all the content online, especially some of the compilations they put together and find the kids subreddit, I think there's a thread where they say basically, you know, all the stuff that he's done over the years that you could maybe say would paint him to be a bad person. You could say the guy's a piece of shit. Now, up to you if you're a fan and you don't care, or if you're a friend and you don't care because he's your friend, but you can't dispute the fact that online and how he presents himself, he does come across poorly. So all this kind of good guy stuff is nonsense. And also you don't think he's a good guy because you talk shit about him also. So it's like, it's confusing. People want to say what they want about his comedy, but the guy... He's like, three years in comedy. The guy was a fucking top 10 heavyweight in uh, MMA. He's yeah. done well, He's done it a bit of successful comedian, yeah. whatever people think about it. Mm. I felt like he got a raw deal. <laughs> whatever think people think about it. What do you mean, what do people think about it? Honestly, I'd much rather you not give me any compliments than talk about all the things I did before I went into the career that I actually love and want to do. Please, just don't say nothing. The fact that he's... You know, he clearly never wanted to be a UFC fighter. He always wanted to be, a, you know, an American football player. That dream never worked out because of whatever reason. Maybe he wasn't good enough. Maybe he got the luck. Of, maybe he was just unlucky with the coaches and stuff. We don't know. I wasn't there. He falls into the UFC because he's athletic and he's able to kind of hustle. And still, to do it is insane. So give that guy props to go into a cage in your underwear against another man who's willing to elbow you and knee you in the face and kick you and punch you and choke you to death is insane. The fact that he did it is sick, but he was never really good at it. He then quits that and is able to kind of segue that into his podcasting career, which then goes to stand up, which he actually loves to some extent because it makes him money and it makes him famous, blah, 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 blah. But to give him all the compliments of the stuff before and not the stuff that he's doing now is just, I would want it. That would, that would hurt my feelings more, Jeremy, you know? because I don't give a shit about that other career. I care about this career. Yeah, no. Yeah, I think and that it, girl, yeah. like, the way she was like, the way they were trying, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to. Oh, no, you oh, meant to. Fuck you off. You know what it was. And you were fuck engaging off. the you Reddit. You, you were making the Reddit cook it up. Yeah. And honestly, when we had him on, we had like a talk with him about, like, I think that you have to, like, we were talking. Okay. This is very strange to me. And I don't understand this. I really don't. I'm sure, and I'm definitely sure, I'm 100% sure in my life that I've definitely been engaged in, flirting with, or had sexual relations with women who are in relationships pretty sure whether they told me they were in one and i still pursued it anyway whether they didn't tell me i'm pretty sure that happened random girls i might have hooked up with who had boyfriends girlfriends husbands whatever partners i'm sure it happened i'm sure it happened but i don't know these partners i don't know hardly know the girl i'm just trying to get my pee pee wet i don't know these people so it doesn't matter but these guys are trying to dismiss or trying to make light of the fact that there is Somebody has accused this guy of approaching one of their fellow peers in their community, Bobby Lee's wife or partner, or long-term partner at the time, in the DMs in, in potential to hook up. Now, is, could Kalala be a whore? Was she asking for it? I don't know, and I don't want to get into that stuff. I don't care because it seems like there's some weird, there's a weird fan base around Kalila where they're trying to paint her out to be some like super prostitute or super whore. It's just insane. I don't really know what's going on there. Even if she is, even if she is very flirty, whatever, I don't care. She's in a relationship with Bobby Lee, who's meant to be this lovable guy that everybody in the community love talks about, and they say how amazing he is. He should film a special. Bobby's so funny. Ah, Bobby, 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 Bobby Lee. But then when one of the guys in your comedy circle 
tries to hook up with their kid Bobby Lee's partner, no one says anything. And that's the thing I really haven't understood this whole entire time, which makes me think, which makes me think that the reason why they don't talk about it often or why they don't say that was a... Because no one, I don't think, has said he fucked up and did bad there. Like, he shouldn't have done that. I don't think I've heard a single person say that. I've heard people talk about he should have handled the Reddit better and all this stuff. and But I've not heard one person say Brendan Shaw did fucked up and was a, did a douchebag move by trying to hook up with Bobby Lee's girlfriend. Not one person said that verbatim. And I think the reason why they probably haven't said that, like most men in that situation, is because they probably have done it themselves. Or they probably have done far worse. Or they're probably doing it at the, at the moment. So they don't want to bring more light to it. You know what I mean, you don't want to throw stones in a glass house kind of thing. That's the reason why. That's probably the reason why. But to sit there and to dismiss the whole thing and make it seem as if it was like the girl's fault for bringing it up is legitimately insane. I've always said, and I'm and I'm a big believer in it, especially when it comes to me trying to approach girls. I've always said in the past as well. I've always said that I'm okay with whatever the girl that I try to approach has to say about their experience with me and it becoming public. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the ridicule, whatever it may be, because I'm in. Because the moment I engage them in some sort of dialogue, or that I try to approach them in a flirty way, or I try and hook up, whatever it may be, I'm basically we we have a shared experience. So I have no right to tell them you can't tell people nothing about what happened here. I would never say that in a million years. Never have said that in a million years, right? Never in the beginning of time have I said that kind of thing. I'm accepting of like, hey. I engage them. With, I engage with them, and they have every right to share this experience wherever they want to share it with. But it seems like these guys have this weird sense of reality around them. Where, what was Kalala meant to do? Not talk about it. Why wouldn't you talk about it? It's your it's your reality too. It's, it's your experience too. Yes, maybe it was said in a dramatic way. Yes, it maybe it was said in a gossipy way. So what? They're women. Who gives a fuck, mate? What do women do? They fucking gossip. Why can't they gossip about shit when the guys in the com- in the comedy community, they gossip even worse than the women do. They gossip about each other all the time. They pretend they're friends. They talk of shit about them in a podcast on codes. Just imagine what they're... Imagine how terribly they talk about each other on podcasts. Just imagine how they're, like, in the group chat, in private and stuff about each other. They, they're awful, these people. There's no friendships there. Zero. They're just flippable. They're, they're trying to take advantage of to go to the next level. It's just, I don't know, the lacking of principles and morals is crazy. They try to talk like they're bastions of society, like they can, you know, they can lead the way. You guys should be following us and this. and But essentially, they're all just out for themselves, really, isn't it? It's quite insane. I've not heard a single person, a single comedian say, Brendan was fucked up for trying to hook up with Kalila while she's in a relationship with Bobby Lee. Not one person said that. Now, again, maybe it's because Kalila's image in the comedy scene well, because again, I don't know shit. I'm in London. I'm far away from everything. Maybe in the scene, she's known as a whore and she sleeps with everybody and she sucks everyone's dick. I don't know. Maybe that's the case. But because they're, the way they're talking about her and treating her is a bit strange. But from what I've seen on podcasts, when Bobby Lee and Kyla were together, everyone seemed to like them. Everyone spoke about how Kyla saved Bobby Lee's life and helped him with his career and la la la. So I really don't understand how it turned into this thing of like let's defend and again it's brendan it's not anybody it's not joe rogan if it was joe rogan i could understand it but it's fucking brendan sure why is everyone like unafraid of like just saying what it is he fucked up he did the wrong thing and he shouldn't have done that no one wants to say that it's really insane to me i don't understand why but anyway continue talking about i think you have to face this head on i think you have to be funny about this like you you have all these people who are listening to your content consuming your content and they're using it to make fun of you but at the same time they're consuming it Engage with them. Make fun of this. Mm-hmm. Sell fucking merch with the sayings You're that are comedian. made. Like, yeah. like these mm-hmm. people are invested in you. Mm-hmm. Find a way where you can galvanize those people. And I think if you show them that it's funny, you show them that there's a sense of humor. I actually think that they would like turn it and support. One hundred percent. Nope. It's too late. It's too late. He's and again, what Trudeau said was was wrong, incorrect. He's not a comedian. That's the one thing that we've seen throughout the years. The guy is not a comedian. He's just somebody that's found a way to monetize talking on a podcast on stage but he's not a bona fide comedian in the slightest which is why i say he should probably just sack off to stand up anyway and find a way to turn the podcast into a live show performancey type thing but when it comes to being a comedian which means being self-deprecating introspective um and whatnot he hasn't got any of that one of those bones in his body doesn't exist which is why this whole reddit is what it is at the moment because his inability to laugh at himself. He could have laughed at himself from the, from the very moment that flipping um, 
Reddit AMA went left because that's when it all started. When that AMA went left, right, and you couldn't understand why people were taking the piss out of him and he was acting really snobby about it and big headed about it and stuff. If he would have been able to laugh at himself and how much of a disaster it was, he would have been fine. He would have been fine, but he couldn't laugh at himself. He couldn't see how people see him. It was impossible. In his head, he was basically mini Joe Rogan. He could do no wrong. And then suddenly he was smacked with reality. And he was like, nah, nah, I don't like this. And he just kind of burrowed down and kind of doubled down into a douchebaggery. And it ended up in the position we're in now. It really is his own fault. I really do believe that. I believe he could have nipped this in the bud long ago. But now the subreddit is nearly, what, 100k strong, full of people, full of people, full of people, right? Full of people who just sole purpose is to shit on him. And to to dem and to illustrate how terrible he is at comedy. Yeah, you know what it is actually. Every, everyone on everyone on social media gets shit on. I get shit on. Everyone gets shit on. If you put stuff online, people are gonna shit on you. That's one thing. But people go out of their way to <laughs> illustrate, demonstrate, showcase how bad he is at stand up. Do you know how horrible that must feel? That people want to they want everyone to know how terrible you are at doing your job. Let alone they shit on you. Fair enough, they shit on you. They think you're annoying and stuff. That's cool. But if they go out of their way to clip things and record, you know, audio record your sets at comedy clubs and put compilations together of your terrible jokes, it's just ouch, 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 ouch. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I think entirely this point of the clip I wanted to say is that in general, in conclusion, the comedy community in general, I guess, lacks principles or their principles and morals are very much people, are basically, are basically person based. If you're a big enough person, if you've got big enough clout, then your principles and morals matter, or then it matters in general. But if you don't, then they don't really care, and they kind of move the goalposts as need be. But I just find it insane how no one said categorically, hey, what Brendan did trying to hook up with Kalala was demonstrably a terrible thing, and a horrible thing you're not ever meant to do to your friends. He did this, you know, probably is part of the comedy community, community, whatever it may be, part of our peer group. He was obviously there before fucking Brendan was there too. You'd imagine there'd be some loyalty there, but it didn't, and they kind of, you know, let it be. So it is what it is, isn't it? I guess if you're probably, at least you know who your friends are, isn't it? At least you know who your friends are. Anyway, what's people saying in the chat here?